Hello folks, Mr. Yaku back here with a quick tutorial on how to use Tickle to get you rolling with Sphero. The application that we want to open up has this uh, killer whale as a picture on its icon, so we're going to tap on that. Okay. And it will load up the screen. And from here we want to tap on New Project. And it will load up this screen here that shows us all these wonderful little technological devices, uh, electronic robotic devices that uh, Tickle can be used to program. We're using Sphero, so let's tap on that one. And here's what is going to pop up on the screen. We've got some blocks of code uh, that are kind of put in place by default to get people started. Now, the best analogy I can give you with, about Sphero is that, or rather Tickle, is that it works kind of like Legos, so if you tap on one of these blocks, you can kind of pull it out of place, and you'll see there's a, a little piece here that if I bring it close to another one, there's a little white line that shows me that those two things can be joined, and I can put that in place just like that. Now, for the sake of this little demonstration, I'm going to get rid of everything except for uh, a couple of lines of code to begin with. Uh, I can delete stuff by moving it off to the left. You can see the garbage can here. So I'm going to get rid of a whole pile of stuff here. Uh, except for the first color and uh, I'm going to leave this alone for now and I'm going to add a little bit more to it to show you how this works. Uh, right now we have one starting to play and we have change color to orange. Now all of your code has to start with one starting to play. If it's not there the code won't execute properly. So we've got that there in place and just to uh, kick this off let's just play around the colors that Sphero can change to. And we'll add in, let's just see here, if we go off the left, I'm looking for weight. So I'm going to add in uh, a weight, and I'm going to set that weight just by clicking here, backspacing to three seconds, and then I'm going to get it to change another color again. And the color we're going to go with is kind of a dark blue. Let's do that. Uh, let's add another weight in, and change the time again to three seconds, and then let's add another color. It's all about repetition here. If I can find it, there it is. And let's change that color to, I don't know, nice West Ferris Force Green. How about that? So that right now, uh, what we'll do is we'll execute this code. And uh, what I'll do is uh, show you a little bit of a side-by-side -side of what happens to the Sphero when this code gets executed. So let's press play. The play button is up here to the left. And when I do that, Hey, the Sphero turns orange, then it waits for three seconds, it turns blue, it waits for three seconds, and then it turns green. And it'll stay on green because there's no other code uh, to execute, so it stops there. From here now, we're going to add in some move commands. And let's... The, the move command that we're going to add in is one that you're going to become very, very familiar with because uh, it's going to be needed to complete um, some of the activities as well as complete the challenge itself. And that move command is move four and at a set time four and at a set speed. Now, it defaults to one second. You can leave that alone. And 50% speed, we're going to leave that alone as well. And I'm going to ask that you don't exceed 50% speed for, this, uh, for the activities we do. And that's just because we're going to be documenting uh, the movement of the Sphero and how it executes the code using an iPad or iPod, iPhone, whatever, video camera. We're going to be recording video. And the thing is, if you crank the speed up to 100%, you're going to be running around the obstacle courses or mazes or down the hallways trying to keep um, keep up with your Sphero, which could be potentially dangerous, I suppose. So let's keep the speed down at 50%, and it will make it a little bit easier for you to complete these activities and um, perhaps a little bit safer, and I'll be, uh, I'll be feeling a lot better about things. So we added in our move command. And we're now going to add in some other stuff. Um, what it's going to do now, it's going to move from one second to 50% speed. It's a set distance. You're going to have to figure out what that distance is to complete some of the challenges. And I'm going to add in another weight again. Uh, in this case here, I think what we'll do is we'll have the weight a little bit longer. So we're going to wait for five seconds. And then we're going to change the color again. I keep going the wrong way. I'm sorry. Change the color again to, let's just change it to like a deep red. And then we're going to turn right by 90 degrees. And then after it turns right by 90 degrees, we're going to move again a for one second at 50% speed. 
So what should happen here is the Spiro should turn orange, wait for three seconds, it should turn blue, wait for three seconds, it should turn green, and then it should move for one second at 50% speed, then it should wait for five seconds, change colors to red, turn right by 90 degrees, and then move straight at, for one second at 50% speed. So let's see what happens here. I'll press play, and we'll do another side-by-side -side to show how the code executes. Go, it should be turning green next. Moves now for one second, 50% speed, speed. It waits for five seconds. It turns red. Then it turns right by 90 degrees. And it moves for one second at 50% speed. And that's all it's going to do. After it's done executing that last line, it's going to stop. There's another code for it. So what I'll do is I'll press the stop button now. And we're ready to add some more code if we so choose. So there you have it, a very quick tutorial on how to use Tickle. Uh, you will hopefully dive deeper into some of these other code blocks and commands that you can use. One that I will mention, um, which will be particularly handy for you, is the repeat commands, specifically this one over here, repeat. And just for, to show you kind of how this works, I can put it in certain places, kind of like this, and I can repeat entire blocks of code if I want. Kind of handy. It has a set amount of times that uh, I can set it to, um, to whatever I want. So uh, there you have it. I hope you folks have a good time exploring this app and completing the challenges. If you need any help at all, see myself or Mr. Culhane. Good luck, folks.